Our Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask of you that in this series of the Christian life that you want me to commence with my people and with as many Christians all over the world who will want to live their lives according to the whims and caprices of the Holy Spirit, I pray that as they come across this message, it will produce the true life of a Christian in them in the name of Jesus, that my members will live to glorify your name. This series will bring them into a life that is pleasing unto God, profitable to believers and useful to sinners. Thank you, Father, for answering this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. I am commencing a series as led by the Holy Spirit himself. And I know it's going to better your life if you can just open your understanding and follow the trend of the Holy Spirit's explanations through every point and every topic I'll be bringing out. Looking at the world today, Christianity has become something else. Christianity is no longer different from any other religion you could see around. And people are beginning to make jest of the Christian life because what used to be very important, what used to be very respectable in those days, people no longer respect them anymore because our lives, you know, has not been working according to the will of God. We live a life that brings confusion to the, to the hearts of so many people who are looking up to us. In Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, the message I'm bringing today to you, entitled, A True Child of God, A True Child of God, is in series. After this one, I'll be bringing to you the new conversion, part 1 and 2. And from there, we'll be building up on the foundation of the Christian life as far as the end time is concerned. I will stay together. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is alive, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is adulatory, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when you lived in them. But now ye are put off all this, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Feed the communication out of your mouth. Verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put up the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wherefore, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all, put on therefore as elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If anyone have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord, a true child of God. Apostle Paul lent a sufficient time to explain to brethren in Colossae, as per the true life of a Christian, how it ought to be, the picture it ought to display, 
the guidelines and of course the focus of a true life of a child of God that will be pleasing unto God. You don't just give your life to Jesus and after then you start living as though Christ is no longer the ruler of your life. There must be a clear disparity between the old life and the new life you got in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if any man be in Christ is a new creature, the newness of life that Jesus has given unto you as a new creature in him must reflect in all you do, in all you say, and everywhere you go, including the work you do as your vocation or career in life. You don't live a life that will be conflicting or antagonistic to the life of Christ and the doctrine of the Bible. Everything called sin must be mortified, must be annihilated, must be crucified, must be crushed. You must have dominion over sin through grace and the help of God. And you do not take the grace of God for granted. Otherwise, you will be grounded. And the Bible says because of this sinful nature that so many people are living in, the wrath of God will come upon them as at when due. But now we are transformed, we are renewed, we are changed and regenerated by election and redemption that Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary offered to you and I in Jesus. And it tells us above all these things, we should put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and that the grace of God will rule our hearts on everything we do. And we should be thankful that we are who we are and what we are by the grace of God. And it says the word of Christ must consciously, deliberately, continually, consistently, on a daily basis, and frequently live in us richly in all wisdom. And then we must be teaching and admonition one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts unto the Lord, that we are saved by the very special grace of God. Now, listen to me. Did you know that Christianity is not a religion? Have you ever been told before? If you haven't been told before, then hear it from me today. It is a life you live unto the Lord. Christianity is not a religion, but a way of life. Christianity is not a fun fear. It is a serious spiritual relationship with God. Those who are not ready to forsake their sins can't, you know, please the Lord and can never serve the Lord acceptably because the life of a Christian is duplicating the lifestyle of Jesus. The word Christians means Christ in you, Christ and me, Christ in you, Christ in me. Please understand that there are two types of Christians, those who fainted at the cross and those who died at the cross. I'm asking you, did you faint at the cross or you actually died at the cross? If you died at the cross, it will be Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me and none other, none other else, none nowhere else could be my Lord and Savior and could be worthy of my loyalty apart from Christ and Christ alone. Jesus and him alone crucified in my life, in my hobbies, in everything I lay my hands upon. A true child of God has character, you know, uh, that is quite different from all others who just profess the name Christian. A true child of God is a regenerated soul, a converted soul, a repented soul, a soul that is washed in the preciousness of the blood of Jesus, the soul that is given unto the Lord, the soul that sin cannot dictate to, the soul that is no longer after sin. Sin is crushed and completely removed from his life and by the grace of God is living in holiness, righteousness, and uprightness, and forthrightness all the days of his life. Godliness will characterize his life and godliness will become his nature anywhere is found, no matter what he is facing. I will stay together, all right? A true child of God does not read negative meanings to a sincere Bible-based sermons. When messages are preached, you will never see a true child of God reading negative meanings to them. A true child of God does not keep malice. 
he doesn't keep malice. No matter what you do to him, you may entreat him, you may blaspheme his faith, you may insult him, you may abuse him, you may call him many names, you may even lie to him and lie against him. You could even misrepresent him. That doesn't mean he's going to keep malice with you. No, a true child of God does not keep malice, but, but he can redefine unproductive relationship to his spiritual life when he discovers that his relationship with you is not helping his spiritual life he redefines his relationship with you without keeping malice or or, or, bot, or bottling up in his heart a kind of a me melancholy against you but then he has every right to keep off as much as it be possible, so as not to backslide, so as not to become a child of the devil after experiencing salvation. If he sees you, he will greet you, but he may not take you as an intimate friend like before because your relationship with him is hampering his salvation. It's not giving him the kind of life he wants to live for the Lord. He has a focus, he has a duty as a child of God to please the Lord and bring as many souls as possible to the kingdom of God. So when he discovers that you are going to be an hinderer, you are going to be an impediment to that. He redefines his relationship with you because he's unproductive. It's not meaningful to him as it were. A true child of God receives genuinely preached messages as avenues for a deeper devotion unto God. It doesn't matter how conk, how harsh or con confrontational the message may seem. A true child of God takes it as an avenue for a deeper devotion unto the Lord. A true child of God sees himself in every message. Before coming to the church at all, he will be praying, O oh Lord, in the message of today, single me out, rebuke me, slap me with your word, rebuke me, confront me, don't cajole me, don't pamper me. I need harsh wells. I want to go deeper. I want to become greater in the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus Christ that I've received many years ago or a few years ago. He sees himself in every message, no matter the explanation and the example the preacher may be citing. He does not see those things as being confrontational. He sees those things as what the Lord is using to correct him and mold his life after Christ and him alone. A true child of God loves challenging and constructive criticism for spiritual growth or progress. It does not matter how confrontational the message may seem. It would say, I will grow better if I receive this one. It becomes useful unto me. A true child of God explore every avenue and life's battles to appreciate and praise God more deeply. A true child of God is never insultive and abusive in wealth or disposition. Is always full of, you know, affectionate and uh, life building wells towards others. A true child of God will never compromise holiness standard and principles anywhere is found in any company where he walks if you don't want him to practice the true holiness and the standard and the principles of serving and pleasing the lord he call it he calls it quit he will quit the job he prefers to go hungry and naked than to compromise the standard of holiness before the lord how many years are we going to live in this world and if we allow that one to jeopardize his eternity Never he is ready to go to any length as much as holiness is concerned within the parameters of the scriptures and the examples that Jesus Christ has given. A true child of God does not mark iniquity. Look at what you did several years ago. I thought you have changed. You have not changed. You did it again and you are repeating it anymore. I mean, you are repeating it again right now. Please, I can't move with you again. No, a true child of God does not mark iniquity. The Bible says, if the Lord should mark iniquity, who then shall stand? And a true child of God does not keep records of sins and offenses. Am I understood and are you following me? A true child of God have his life characterized with transparency, accountability, humility, and dependability. You can depend on him. He's highly accountable. Whatever is, is being committed into his hands, none of them will be missing. And upon demand, he will produce them without 
you know, miles and wells. He's so transparent. You can predict him. You know what he can do. If it has to do with compromise, with worldliness, with liturgy and spiritual like a dasicality, you could simply say this one will never oblige. It will never compromise. It will never agree with you. And truth to your word is not going to agree. Why? He has a master that he is following and the master is transparent. The master is accountable. The master is dependable. The master is humble. The master is respectful. And the master is godly. So he doesn't want anything lesser than this. That's why a true child of God will gladly express intimidating humility and is also highly respectful by nature. A true child of God does not find fault wherever is found. It's never a fault finder. He practices the presence of God everywhere. That's what the Bible says. You study to show thyself approved unto God. As a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of the law standeth sure, having the zeal. The Lord knows them that are his, wherefore, let every man name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. A true child of God weighs his wells before uttering them. You don't see him talking sarcastically. He does not talk carelessly. He talks godly. He talks winsomely. His wells are life building. That's true. That's a true child of God for you. A true child of God does not rejoice in iniquity or outright evil. You don't see him laughing. You don't see him contributing to iniquity. No, he quits the place and rebukes the people there. Reproachful, abominable, and idle words can never proceed from his mouth because he's a true child of God. He maintains a low profile in any organization he finds himself. You will never see him, no, playing front. He's never too forward. No, he does not play the front role. He stands where he is and he makes sure that what he, whatever he does will become his instruction, will become a way to live for God. He's careful in his living. He's careful in his wells. He's careful in his utterances. He's careful in the wisdom of God, in the, in the association and friendship he forms. A true child of God knows his limits and boundaries. A true child of God loves people candidly, candidly. In Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37, I said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak, he will give account on the day of judgment. Verse 37, for by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. That's why he does not talk anyhow. A true child of God honors and cares about the integrity of men of God. You don't see a true child of God castigating men of God, relegating men of God to background and speaking, you know, uh, swelling wells against them. He won't abuse them. He will not ridicule them. When you find yourself ridiculing a man of God, you are not godly. You are not serving the Lord. You are not a child of God. Who made you an overseer over men of God? You better be careful. A true child of God preaches and protects the gospel of salvation and holiness anywhere you see him, and he does not exaggerate. He does not exaggerate. You find people exaggerating. You find people saying what is not real. And they will say it as if they were there. A few people, on the other hand, will relate what has happened. They will add to it. To, they will sugarcoat it. They will embellish it with all manner of embellishments just to make it more appealing, inviting and captivating to their audience. Why must you do that as a child of God? Have you ever seen God exaggerating? Have you ever seen the apostles exaggerating? Why must you exaggerate? If you have this in your life and you call yourself a true child of God, you will be so surprised on the last day that the trumpet will sound, you will be left behind because the exaggerators will not make the kingdom of God. A true child of God works continually on his temperament. Don't say, I am taken after my father. 
I am taken after my mother. I don't know how to talk. Each time I am annoyed, I destroy many things. That's why you will go to hell. That's why you are not a child of God. It's a living proof that you are just a child of God by mouth alone or by mouthing, not by acting. You must be a child of God in words, in works, in deeds, in actions. Christianity is all about character modification. You work continually on your temperament until you become like Christ. Didn't Christ say, come and learn of me? Come and learn from me. A true child of God is not deceitful. It's not pretentious. It's not hypocritical in any way. A true child of God does not rebel against announcement or, instru or instruction in the church. As instruction comes, it takes it. Hook, line, and sinker. A true child of God maintains laws and orders in the society. He will never take one way. He will never drive against the traffic. He will, he will obey the traffic orders. He will do the right thing anywhere he finds himself. He does not jump protocol. He doesn't jump queue. He will queue until it is turned. He will never say, do this or that for me. He maintained laws and others in the society. Yes, very law-abiding citizen of his country. A true child of God does not bear false witness. If the guilty one is his friend, he will witness against him when they called him for questioning. He would say, although he is my friend, but he is guilty. He will never be afraid of any man's personality to the point that he will be compromising the truth. No, he knows that failure to speak the truth as at when due is tantamount to destruction, is tantamount to deception and hypocrisy. So he will rather choose to be hated by people than to be hated by God. He knows that God's judgment is weightier than the abusive and assertive words anybody could hold on him. A true child of God is not a jester or scammer. It's not a jester. It does not jest. It does not scam people. A true child of God is a pillar. Is a builder in his church. He's not a caterpillar in his church. He's a builder in his church. He's a pillar in his church. He's a ladder in his church. He's a bridge in his church. A true child of God, a pa his pastor does not joke with him because his life is transparently holy. A true child of God spends his money, his time, his energy, and his possessions on gospel propagation. You see, when you look at the internet today, you see a number of people who profess to love the society more than the things of God. And when they see people paying their tithe and bringing huge sum of money to do God's work, they abuse them. They tell them their pastors has manipulated them, or their pastors has hypnotized them and mesmerized their hearts, that they do not know what to do again, that their past, they are just following their pastors sheepishly. I don't blame you. You, you don't know God. You are a child of the devil. That's why you reason like that. A true child of God uses his money freely to serve the Lord. You can't dictate to me as per how to spend my money. You spend your money for the devil. Allow me to spend my money for God. After all, you didn't give me any cobble. The work I did, God gave me the strength. So if I'm giving my money to, to God, how may that be your concern? How may that be your problem? You go to night club. Does anybody moderate how much you spend at the light you know, the nightclub does anybody moderate how much you spend on alcohol on al uh, alcoholism nobody is moderating either how much you spend on prostitutes why should you tell me how dare you how dare you? Do you know how I make my money? How I sweated the length I went to, the extra mile I went to by the grace of God. When you were sleeping, I was working. When you were jesting, I was working. When you were castigating others, I was working. Now God breathed into the work of my hands and he has given me profit as a result of my frantic effort by his grace and you are telling me not to pay my tithe. How much of the Bible do you think you know? How much of God do you think you know? Do you, Can you ever love people better than the creator? Can you ever love people better than God who created them? Please, as a child of God, let nobody tell you how to use your money, how to spend your money, and how to relate with God more neutrally. If you believe truly that who you are and what you are 
come from God, then release those things unto him and watch to see what the Lord will do afterward with your life. Look at our fathers and the faith. See how God has promoted them. See how God has helped them. It is the same principle. When you understand the principle and you apply the principle, you will be blessed. Nobody should coerce you to give. If you don't understand and you don't want to give, there is no problem. Those who are giving, don't discourage them. Allow them to do what they ought to do. They read the scriptures. They heard the message. The Holy Spirit convicted them and instructed them to do what they are doing. Why must you instigate people against God? Don't you think your judgment will be great on the final day before the Lord? If you have been doing that, you better stop it and go look for a better job to do and stop earning money from the internet as a result of destructive works. The enemy, the devil, who is the enemy of the gospel, is using you to achieve. A true child of God spends his money for God, his time for God, his energy for God, his possessions for God, and he does that on the basis of gospel propagation without coercion. A true child of God will never look down on anybody. He does not have greater respect for the rich than the poor. He honors them alike, and he relates with them alike because he believes it is the same Spirit of God that lives in them both. A true child of God speak, speaks the truth always. He speaks the truth always, even if the truth spoken is largely detrimental to his actions. He will speak the truth. A true child of God is a peacemaker. He's not a noisemaker. He's not destructive. He's a peacemaker. He's easygoing and gentle-natured. A true child of God is easily entreated. If there is anything wrong anywhere with a true child of God and you want to correct him, he takes it gently. Is, is, is meek at heart, is lowly and meek at heart. If we want to settle a dispute between two, two believers and we could not settle it, this one is saying, I will never agree, it will never happen over my dead body. Brother, you are not born again. Sister, you are a backslider because open rebuke is better than secret love. That's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 27. Open rebuke is better than secret love. A true child of God delights in rebuke and uh, heavenly messages. Heavenly messages. A true child of God does not run around for miracles. No. He's a miracle worker himself. So why must he be running around for miracles? No. He does not castigate. He does not blackmail. He does not mis misrepresent people's identity. What does he stand to gain in that? A true child of God is an obedient and teachable person. Obedient and teachable person. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. From this uh from verse uh, 11 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the defining of the body of christ to we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carry about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby the lie in which to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him. In all things, which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly jointed, joined together, I beg your pardon, and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now listen to this, verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the law, 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having their understanding darkened, being annihilated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk on cleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness and true holiness and the Bible went further to say in verse 25 wherefore putting away lines speak every man with his neighbor for we are members one of another be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your lord neither give place to the devil let him that stood still no more but rather let him labor walking with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needed. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Lord, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had forgiven you. That is the brief summary of the characteristics of a true child of God. A true child of God is an obedient and teachable person. A true child of God can never be found playing and losing concentration or sleeping in the service. Service is ongoing. You are sleeping when you are not sick. When you are not sick, you are sleeping. Not a child of God. He knows that when men sleep, the enemies will come and he will sow tires amongst the wheat. A true child of God does not double deal. It's not a cheat, it's not a rook, it's not a scammer, it's not a froster. A true child of God makes the Bible the final authority over his life, over his family, over his friendship, over his career, over his association. A true child of God does not mock the ministers of God. He doesn't mock the ministers of God. He does not mock the ministers of God. A true child of God does not watch pornography and dirty home videos. You will never see, see a child of God watching poems, pornography, and dirty home videos. Never, whether on his phone or on the TV, he has no time for that. He knows that he will be exciting his carnal nature and that will lead him to disobeying and sinning against the Lord. A true child of God is easily forgiving and very understanding. In fact, he forgives in advance. He has an eyes that sees beyond the physical. He will never allow the devil and all his messengers to slow him down on the highway of holiness. A true child of God does not capitalize on people's generosity to dupe or exploit them. You will never see a true child of God capitalizing on the generosity of the people, the kind-heartedness of the people to exploit them, to siphon them. No, he too is, is reasonable. It's reasonable. He has human feelings. A true child of God does not argue at all. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2 verse 7, Titus chapter 2 verse 7, you study to show thyself. I mean, Titus chapter 2 verse 7 says in everything, in everything, showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing uncorruptedness, sincerity, graffiti, graffiti and maturity. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Whatsoever therefore you wish that man do unto you, do likewise unto them. A true child of God has no alternative to Christ's demands and commandments to him. And he does not see any commandment of God as being grievous or too tough to do. A true child of God renews his commitment to Christ daily. 
He is not a traitor. He's not a backstabber. He's not a gossip. A true child of God does not joke with anything capable of building him up spiritually. Whether he can find it in the scripture or not, anything that can build up his spiritual life, a true child of God does not joke with it because he knows that the time is very short. A true child of God is a contagious intercessor. If you sit beside him in the service, you will pity yourself if you are not naturally a prayerful person. If you are not naturally a prayerful person, you will pity yourself. You will be repeating what he is saying because he is vast in the Bible and is up to date in the spirit. A true child of God, he prays, he prays and prays and prays without seasoning. Yes, you see him praying without ceasing. A true child of God is an addicted soul winner. I want to ask you, the year is almost running to a close. How many souls have you won for the master? How many people are you witnessing to? How many people have had the gospel message from you, a true child of God? Must you keep quiet? You've gotten the salvation message. You share the news abroad. Win souls for the master. Win souls for the master because he that winneth a soul is wise according to the book of Proverbs. A true child of God is a loyalist and a truthful person to a fault, very loyal, very truthful. A true child of God lives with eternity in view. He does not lie. He does not implicate. You will see him exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit in every situation. He does not sit I do in the church. You are in the church for years. You are not in any group. You are not in any, any department in your church and you call yourself a true child of God. You don't tell me you don't have any gift. You, sure, you surely do. You have some gifts with you. You are only being I do. The Bible says one to him that at ease in Zion. You don't see any department you can join. And you call yourself a true child of God. You are not. You are not a true child of God. A true child of God does not skip church programs deliberately. If you don't see him in the service, it wasn't intentional. A true child of God does not discuss spiritual issues derogatorily. He's a cheerful giver. He's a cheerful worshiper. He's, he's as bold as lion. A true child of God values and prioritizes teaching above miracle seeking. A true child of God does not walk up and down during the service. He does not behave like a visitor or a spy in the house of God. I tell you the truth. He doesn't behave like a spy or a visitor amongst the brethren. He sees the church as his family. He uses his gifts and talents freely for God. A true child of God does not accommodate air say. He's a joyful worshiper. As I close, I want to relate with you. What happens between Abraham and the Lord? In Genesis chapter 13 from verse 1 to 9, the Bible says the land became too small for the earthsmen of Abraham and that of Lord. And there was a strife between them. And the Bible says Abraham called Lord and said, what am I hearing? No, we are brethren, we can't be fighting. Unbelievers are here. We've told them we are people of God, that God is sending us somewhere. How come that we are now fighting? They will be seeing us as liars, as uh, deceivers, whose words can never be taken, who climb and sink up. Please, this is the land before you. Choose wherever you want to go. I will be contented to dwell with the with the side you left for me. And the only place Lot could see was the well-watered place of Sodom and Gomorrah. He left and separated himself from Abraham because of covetousness and what he liked to become in the future. Unfortunately, he entered Sodom and Gomorrah in full. He came out empty. He lost his wife. And of course, his testimony of his faith became dented and undesirable because he went into his daughters. I want to tell you today as a true child of God, stay in your church, no matter what they do to you in that place. Stay there, serve the Lord, and be a good example that people can follow. 
Time will tell what the Lord will do with your life. Are you a true child of God or you are still patching some spiritual injuries? When are you going to get them healed and become a joyful worshiper? Are you a true child of God? Are you holy? Are you regenerated? Are you saved? Is your name written in the book of life? How prepared are you for the rapture? Should you die now? Where to? Will you be guilty on that day? Think about it. Until I come your way again in another Bible study. Keep living in the atmosphere of godliness, of holiness, and uprightness before the Lord. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We will meet in heaven if you do them. God bless you.